let's go ahead and stand up as we read. Actually, you know what? Y'all are good because we're going to read a lot. You can sit down. We're going to read Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to read the 25th verse, uh, and then, um, yeah, we'll read 25 through 27. How about that? Okay. Let's go ahead and read. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses uh, verses 25 says this, God made every one of them, and then he looked at what he had done, and it was good. Somebody say, it's good. All right. And then God said, now we will make humans. Isn't it funny how God said we? God, one person, he said we. God's actually three distinct persons. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were together. And he said, now we will make humans, and they will be like us. We will let them rule the fish, the birds, and all other living things. So God created humans to be like himself. He made man and woman, and he gave them a blessing. Now flip over to uh, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 5. This is going to be really, really interesting. So when God made the heavens and the earth, uh, and hopefully we have this on the screen, God made the heavens and the earth, And also, no grass or plants were growing anywhere. God had not yet sent any rain, and there was no one to work the land. But the streams came up from the ground and watered the earth. And then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and made a man. And God breathed life into the man. And the man started breathing, and the Lord made a garden in the place called Eden, which was in the east, and he put man there now if you can scroll down to verses 15 and the lord god put the man in the garden of eden to take care of it and took and look after it but the lord told him he said you may eat fruit from any tree in the garden except for the one that has the power to let you know the difference between right and wrong if you eat any fruit from that tree you will die before your day is over before the day is over and the lord god said isn't it good for any man to live alone it rather he said it isn't good for any man to live alone he said I will make a suitable partner for him so then the Lord took some soil and made animals and birds and he brought them to the man to see what names he would give each of them and then the man named uh, the tame animals and the birds and the wild animals that's actually how they got their names and so none of these were the right kind of partner for a man I mean who who wants to be married to a giraffe I mean that's weird and so the Lord God made him fall into a deep sleep and then he took out of the man's rib one of them and then after closing the man's side the Lord made woman out of the rib And the Lord God brought her to the man. And then the man exclaimed, here is someone like me. She is a part of my body, my own flesh and bones. She came from me, a man, so I will name her woman. That's why a man will leave his own father and mother. He marries a woman, and the two of them become like one person, although The man and his wife were both naked. They were not ashamed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Um, We want to give all of ourselves to you. And then maybe one day, uh, if it's your desire, to give all of ourselves to someone else. So over the next three weeks, I just ask your blessing over the series and the stuff that we're going to talk about. I pray that you would um, take some things down in our minds that, that have not been true and then build up some things in our minds um, that's based on truth and not lyrics or, uh, you know, what our friends said, but what's actually real. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to learn how to give all of ourselves to you and then one day to somebody else, starting with our love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, uh, before you uh, turn to someone real quick and say, all of me. I can't, I don't know how to, I don't know tenor or baritone. I don't know. I can't do it. (laughs) So uh, this month, we're going to be talking about this series called All of Me, Lies or Love, Lies and Labels. And, and, And really, before we can really get into this whole idea of love and relationships and booze and junks and your joint 
and your husband or your wife. Somebody said boo jank. Yeah, before you can get into all that, you got to think about it. Think about it. When was the first time you noticed yourself? Think about it. The very first time you ever like noticed yourself. Remember when you were a kid and and you would just play in the dirt and and especially if you're a guy, like you would just just dirty, just sweaty, stinky. You would play outside. Remember back in the day when you used to play outside when you were in first grade and you would just run around and you you know you would you know get holes in your jeans because you know you were just you played around so much. And then and then what happens is at some point in in the game you realize yourself. You you realize like. There, I, have, I have an image, I have a way I look, I have a way I'm presented to people, and that changes. And for me, I remember exactly when it happened. It happened in the fourth grade. I remember I was, I was living in, in North Dakota. Uh, we were, it was a bunch of snow, and I remember that like, I, was, I was at the playground, and I'm just playing, like, you know, playing, playing. And we're playing. And we're outside, and then I remember... I remember like r- r- walking around and playing and then there was this girl, right? And this girl, before, you don't notice yourself when you're a kid. You don't realize, you know, how you're presented to people. And, and this girl, when we were in the middle of us playing, she went like this. She said, ew. I don't even know what ew. I'm like, oh, did somebody use a bathroom? Is there a dead animal around? And I was talking to her. Like, I was talking very close to her. And she said, ew. And I, before then, I, I had to brush my teeth, but I just, it, it was an optional thing. Like, I did, I, sometimes I did it, sometimes I didn't do it. It didn't matter because, it, you know, here or there, one way, or, it didn't matter. I didn't realize what would happen if you go a week without brushing your teeth. And so I hadn't brushed my teeth because I was just so excited. I get up early, super early, and it was, you know what? And so to that, to, she said she said something that, that struck me to my core. To this very day, I, I feel bad. I, I like check my like. She said, "Your breath stinks." And to that moment, I had never even known that if you don't brush your teeth, there's a there's a funk, there's a stench that comes out of there's a halitosis that comes out of your mouth. And in the moment when another person smells that, it will knock them on the ground because it's you stink so. And so that was the first time that I noticed myself. So from that moment on, for the sheer fact of I didn't want to feel embarrassed the way that I just did in front of this girl, like I said. I got to go brush my teeth now, not because I don't want cavities, not because like I, you know, it's the proper thing to do because I don't want to go in front of another girl and she, I felt embarrassed like that. And then it got older, you know, the moment, you, you know, you get a little bit older and then, and then you have another experience where, where you, 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 you like, you have some, 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 something, then you're supposed to wear a certain thing and you're supposed to look a certain way. And somebody like, I remember another time, like I had these, I had these shoes and they weren't really, they were boots. And at the time, like Tim's were like really, really popular and, and, and I couldn't afford Tim's. I had these shoes, they were called Tam's. I'm not kidding. They were Tams. They were fake Tims. And, and, and it's funny because m- one of my siblings, we couldn't afford it. He was an artist. And so he asked my brother, he said, hey, can you draw a fake Timberland sign on my boot? So he drew where the Tim sign goes right here, like a fake tree, a little, you know, with a brown marker and it. It looked good. And then all of a sudden, like somebody saw it, like somebody checked. You know, middle school kids are mean. Y'all are just rude. Y'all are, you just don't care about anybody other's feelings. So he's, he's walking and then somebody said, are those fake tips? Ah! And he started really no. Notice himself. So up until these points, you really don't know how you are, but then you adjust your behavior based on what other people think about you. And and, and it has nothing to do with, you wouldn't do that for a bunch of dudes if you're a guy, or you wouldn't do that for a bunch of girls, but the moment the opposite sex notices you, 
good or bad, it does something to you. And you know why that is? It's because that's wired in our DNA. That if we look back at the very beginning, we are to be somewhat concerned about what the opposite sex thinks about us. It's, it's wired that way. We're, we're, we're wired that way because in the very beginning, God decided to create man and live in this beautiful place called Eden in the garden. And God gave this man, Adam, he said, the very first man, he said, I'm going to give you a responsibility. I'm going to give you a job to do. And he started like naming animals, giraffe, zebra, a rhinoceros, octopus, um, you know, cheetah, uh, platypus, duck, penguin, just, just platypus, duck, bird, <laughs> just naming stuff. And all of a sudden, because God said, you know, it's not good that he'd be alone. So let me create some animals so that he can, you know, have some companions. So they're just walking around. The, the Garden of Eden is just responding to him. And just, I believe it was animated. And it doesn't look like what we know the Garden to be now. You take the biggest Hollywood imagination times 100 of whatever that would be, this garden. And then all of a sudden, you know, Adam is having a good time in the garden with these animals. And God's like, no, that ain't right. They don't even kind of look like him. That ain't right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to knock him out. He goes to sleep. God said, I'm going I'm I'm to I'm blow his mind. I'm going to make him a jump. I'm going to make him a, uh, not a side piece. I'm not going to make him just a, a, uh, a, a, a ride or die chick. He said, I'm going to take out of his own self a rib and fashion a woman out of it. Fashion another person. And then when Adam woke up and he saw this, I believe she was the baddest thing ever. Because Adam was like, oh. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, ain't no way. He started, he started spitting poetry. He didn't even know he could spit poetry. He just started, it just came out of him naturally. <laughs> he said, I'm going to call, because you have a womb, I'm going to call you woman. He spit that game. Bow. <laughs> but this is the thing. Why did God decide to create a woman and he wasn't satisfied with the animals. But this is the reason why. Think about it. Because he said this. He said, we were created in, in Genesis chapter 1. He said, we were created in the image and likeness of God. We create man in the image and likeness of God. We. We. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We are going to create. See, the, the, this is the thing, you guys. We didn't make up relationships. God did. He did it at the very beginning when it was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They've been there forever, for eternity. Don't even try to think about it. It'll hurt your head. Forever. Always. Ever. And then he said, okay, I'm going to create this world, and I'm going to make this, make earth, and then I'm going to create all these trees and these things, and then I'm going to create man, and I'm make animals, but it's not good that he's alone. So I'm going to do something else. Because this is the thing, God, God, it, it, about relationships, it was never a, supposed to be this solo, by yourself, do it on your own, do life by yourself. It was never, life was never meant to be lived alone. In fact, God said it wasn't a good thing that you, that, that, that man would be by themselves. And so, but from the very beginning, God knew that, that there was this thing that he put in us that, that wanted to, to be known by somebody else and, and to be loved by somebody else. And so what he did was he created woman and man so that they could relate to one another, have a bunch of babies, overpopulate the world and run the world. Not girls run the world. No. Not just a bunch of bosses and dudes masterminding the, the creation. No. He wanted man and woman to live together, have a bunch of babies, and run this thing. 
And, and, and see, this is what happened. We jacked it up because now, you know, snake came in, tempted Eve. Eve went for it. Eve tempted Adam. He went for it. Everything falls down from there. We start putting fig leaves on ourselves, designer fig leaves and, you know, fake stuff to cover up our situation. Because we're, we're, we, 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 God knew us by our, he knew us from the very beginning, but now he can't look at sin without turning his back. So he had to send Jesus to come and restore us. So this is what I, this is what I'm thinking about. I was thinking about all the banging love songs that are ever have ever been out. All of them, all of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. And if you think about any great love song or love story, there's there's this plot that happens. There's the plot of 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 the girl is 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 wanting a, a man, but all the other dudes are bad dudes. They're, they're they're not good guys, and so she goes through relationship and relationship, and she's looking for the right dude, and the right dude never comes around. She gets dogged out, and then the plot recently in the past 30, 40 years has changed to where you know what? I don't need a man. Like I'll just be by myself and I'll take on the same ideas that some of these dog men have and I'll I'll treat myself in the same way but I'm a I'm a respectful woman and I'm into I don't need another dude and then the dudes were like you know what you don't gotta be you don't gotta be just one one woman like why would you be with one person that's boring bunch of them have a bunch of them ballers players pimps a lot of junks, like a lot, variety. And see, the challenge is this, is that then we look and we're trying to figure out now as a 16 or 17 year old, or maybe as a 13 year old where, you know, everybody has these opinions about what a relationship is supposed to be. And so what we start doing is we start basing our opinions and our views on how we should relate to another woman or to another man. And we start basing that off of what feels good and then also what, what other people label us as. So we're literally taking love that we're supposed to have for another man or another woman and we're believing some of the lies. The lies that said if it feels good, it's right or the lie that says the only way that you can be down like the only way to make sure that he will never leave you is you got to ride or die for him all day forever even if it takes you over the cliff because you're his ride or die or you will hold her down yeah but what if you're holding her down and then and you holding her down you end up limiting yourself and see, so this is, this is, these are the things that, so over the next three weeks, we're going to talk about the purpose of love and some of the lies that, that, that are out there. And then, and then finally, we're going to talk about the labels and dismantling some of the labels that are out there because the originator of relationship never wanted you to be alone. That's the reason why it's hard. You, you no, know, who enjoys being lonely? No, nobody, nobody. Now, let me say this, who every now and then enjoys time to themselves? Everybody. Think about it. Why do you think we enjoy time to ourselves? Think, reflect, cut away from all the craziness. I just need to be with me. I don't need no new friends. And because there's this thing in us that God put in us from the very beginning that we want to give ourselves all to somebody else because God put that in us because we wanted to give it all to God. But then the dysfunction and the break happens when we don't give ourselves fully to God. And then now we don't know how to properly give ourselves to somebody else. And so you don't know, guys, you don't know how to relate to another woman just on a sister level. Like just, just she's your sister. And so you, you constantly like, you think that every, per, every female that you come in contact with, you have to, you're super flirtatious just because you you want to impress them so bad even people you don't know even girls you don't know because because there's this thing in you that never wants to be by himself and the way that that plays out is that you flirt with everybody everybody you flirt with them all 
you're the you're the one you're the one you're the one ladies who you spend m- way too much time making sure that when you walk into a room people check you out they start whispering did you see did you see her because you don't want to be alone or you never think that there could ever be anything for you because you saw what happened to mom and dad and it didn't work out for them so why would it work out for you and see this is this is the challenge i want you to write this down write this down for all of me write this down is that the decisions that you make today determine the reality that you have tomorrow the decisions that you make today determine your reality tomorrow. The, and see, students, this is the thing. Y'all look at me, look at me. I, I know, I know. It's, it's, it, most of us, it's hard to see past tomorrow. Most of us, it's hard to imagine consequences past what's going to happen, you know, tomorrow and, and Friday and, and next. We start talking about like one day when you're married. It's like, Dave, what are you talking about? Like, that's like, you know, my parents are married. Like, what are you talking about? And so the goal isn't even to be married, but the goal is to say, okay, this is the beautiful thing. If the decisions you make today determine your reality tomorrow, why would you not think that God has a, a perfect plan for your tomorrow in regards to who you gonna relate who you're gonna relate with? Like God is so concerned about your tomorrow and the romantic life that you're going to have in that future and in the destiny that he has. He has he, that he has such an interest in that that he decided that he decided before we even get started, I'm going to put the pattern in the Bible at the very beginning so that if anybody tries to come against that pattern, they're going to fall because ultimately write this down. Not only is that your, your decisions that you make today determine your reality tomorrow, but there's purpose in God for your relationship. There's purpose in God for your relationship. You got to know this. Write this stuff down. You have to know this because what happens is if you don't think that God cares about who you date, if you don't think about God, if you think that God doesn't, re- he's not really too concerned about like what I do with myself with the person that I date or, or even if God wants me to date somebody like he doesn't even, he doesn't even, he, if you don't know that God absolutely has a purpose for you in regards to how you give yourself the challenge then is how do I do that and what does it look like because what hap- what culture says today what everybody says today is do what feels right if it feels good how could it be wrong right if it feels good how could it be wrong that feels good How could that be wrong? But see, this was the lie that Adam bought. Jesus told him, or God told him, he said, listen, stay away from the fruit. Stay away from that tree. You can have everything in this whole garden. The whole world is yours. Stay away from this one tree because the moment you eat from the fruit of that tree, you'll then be able to determine what's right and wrong. And and you knowing what's wrong is wrong for you. You knowing what's right is is you, because I created you with the will and I created you with the desire and I created created you with with something that would want more than just what's around you right now and and if you do this you'll buy the lie and so I am giving you fruit because I think you love me so much and that's what we're talking about today I think I, you have given all of yourself to me talked about that last month giving it all to God you've given all of yourself to me and I know you love me so much that that you won't buy the lie that if it feels good it's right because think about it there's so much right and wrong and even the things that feel right they can end up being wrong for us and so when it comes to who we're dating and relating to in friendship we have to establish this first thing is that god never wanted you to be by yourself that's the reason have you ever thought like, think about it think about it think about it when when you're feeling lonely and you like you know you're feeling sad and you're down and you're by yourself the the thing that we all do is we try to look for something that makes us feel better 
Because who likes to feel lonely? Nobody, nobody likes that. And so what we do is we, we, we do things that make us feel better. And, and part of it that we do is because we're wired for relationship. We are wired to be together. We are created to walk together. That's the way that we are created. So naturally what you do is like, I don't feel good. This doesn't feel right. Uh, I'm going to go hook up with somebody to make me feel better. Like, I, or I, like this doesn't feel right, so let's go, let's go out tonight. Or I don't feel good, so let me go hit up so-and-so and ask him what's it. Because, we, we, because there's something in us that's wired for relationship. But if you don't understand that God has a purpose for your life in regards to your relationships, then what you do is you, you take the instinct that God put inside of you and then you just drift off into this thing because you've decided not to let God determine about your relationship. So then you drift off to something and you take that fruit because even though it feels good, it could still be wrong for you. And what needs to happen, what's going to happen is that, is that you then make a series of, of unfortunate decisions that, that don't make you feel any better than the condition that you were in before. Because just because he says, girl, do you know? I will... I will buy you some shoes. We're talking about Valentine's. Valentine's Day every day. Flowers every day. Why? Cuz. <laughs> Put you in my profile. I ain't ashamed of it. <laughs> Who my John? She is. At at, mm, click on her. She bad, ain't she? I know. Hashtag. Look, because you're wired for relationship. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. But is it right? Because you're 15. Where can this go? Where is it going to go? We're going out. Where? You ain't going nowhere. You don't got no car. No, girl. We can hit this, hit this movie right quick. Where are we going afterwards? You know, we'll hit this. They got this Taco Bell spot up the street. Matter of fact, being up cookout, this cookout, cookout, five dollars we both eat. <laughs> now, where is this going? Because you're wired for relationship, you don't want to be lonely. But what you haven't thought about is that God has a purpose for for your relationships. And if the dude doesn't fit in line with the purpose, then guess what? It feels good. Oh, it feels good. But what if it's not right for you? See, I, I just want you to get, I just want to start to get you thinking. I just want to get you thinking. And we're not going to drop any. I just want to get you thinking. See, because she, 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 everybody knows she's bad. Everybody knows she's it. And she finally paid you some attention. You grew a mustache. You started working out like hardcore over the summer. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, she going to know, she going to, she. <laughs> Every day in the mirror, like, y'all see that? Y'all see that? Ain't nothing to it, but you see it. It's like, y'all, y'all don't see it. Half a centimeter on it. Before and after. Six months later. Still look the same, but you're in your head because you, you're just so in, madly infatuated with her. But I know she's bad, but she could really be bad for you. I know she's everybody would do anything to be with her. In fact, she shows everybody on Instagram all of her. And part of your reason why you're attracted 
It ain't because she's smart. It ain't because she can carry on a conversation. It isn't. Let me get even closer. Would you even let her know that you love Jesus? No, because you're following her in hopes that she will follow you because she cares so much about herself. She has to show you all of herself online. But think about it, because she wants to be noticed as well, the same way that Eve did. It could be that she's been hurt somewhere, and she doesn't know how to get proper response from men, and the way that she feels that she can do that is by showing all of herself to you. See, this is what I want to do, students. I, I just want you guys to start thinking over this next three, these next three weeks about why you respond and relate to women and men the way that you do. Because again, remember, this is what we're talking about today. God does have a purpose. He has such the romance story. Listen to me as a dude that has lived it out. And we're going to share about all this. You know, my wife and I, we're going to talk. You know, we're going to have a panel. It's going to be awesome in a couple of weeks. But I just want you to start thinking about it. There is a, there is a purpose for your life. And the person that God wants you to be with is right in there. But you'll never see that if you can't ever let God give voice into the love that you have right now. And so what I'm going to challenge us over these next three weeks is that we have to figure out we want to give all of ourselves to God and one day give all of ourselves to someone else. The question, though, is who is it that we're going to be able to do that for? And what are you doing right now to help serve that purpose? Because you got to realize, Jesus, God loves you so much. He loves, y'all, y'all, he is, he is, he loves you so much that he meant for you to never be alone. He, he knew that you would be alone, and he said, it ain't good that you're alone. It's not good that you would be alone. It's not. It ain't good. I'm good all by myself. You're lying. I don't need nobody. Well, the Bible says otherwise. <laughs> and so does your face, too, though. Because he, he, is, he loves you so much, every single the, 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 the love that he has for you and the amount, the radical, the radical, unabounding love that he had. He, he's seen you in your worst condition. And he says, I love you so much that I'm going to send my own son to die because I want you to be with me. But if you don't know that, and if you don't know how much he loves you, what happens is, you give yourself to other people that they feel like they love you. And it feels right, but it's actually wrong. But he loves you. And the love that he has for you is because he knew that you would be lonely and he never wanted you to be that way. Stand to your feet.